All right, welcome everyone. Today, we're gonna do a really high yield, grand round style breakdown of upper limb replantation. Think of this as the practical guide you need, whether you're a resident cramming for your boards or you're the attending on call getting that dreaded page in the middle of the night. These are the pearls that'll help you succeed. Okay, so here's how we're gonna break this down. We've got five key parts. We'll kick things off with that all important first step, deciding whether to even replant. Then we'll dive deep into the micro techniques for digits. After that, we'll tackle the tough stuff, joints, avulsions, and kids. Then we'll get into strategy for rebuilding a whole hand, and we'll wrap up with major limbs and post-op care. So, first things first. And honestly, this is the most critical step of all, deciding if you should even attempt the replant. Getting this part right is absolutely foundational, not just for passing your exams, but for your actual practice. Because remember, the goal isn't just a part that survives, it's a part that works. Now this slide is your bread and butter. You have to know this cold. The stuff on the left, the absolute indications, those are pretty much your no-brainers. You see a thumb, multiple digits, or any part from a child, you're replanting. But the list on the right, that's where the art of surgery comes in. That's where you have to use your clinical judgment and have a real conversation with the patient about the risks of ending up with, say, a stiff or numb finger. So before you even dream of looking through a microscope, you have to run through this mental checklist. Because let's be real, a technically perfect replant on a patient who's medically unstable is not a win. It's a failure of judgment. Your first job, always, is to stabilize the patient, period. All right, let's zoom in now. We're gonna get down to the micro level and walk through some of the most common and toughest scenarios, starting right at the fingertip. Okay, when you're working this far out, it is all about venous outflow. The artery, you can usually find it, but getting that blood back out, that is the whole ball game. It's the number one reason these ultradistal replants fail. If you don't have good venous drainage, it's just not gonna make it. This right here, this is pure gold. You have to burn this anatomy into your memory. We're all trained to look for veins on the dorsum right. We'll forget that when you're distal to the DIP joint. The bigger, more reliable veins are actually on the palmar side, and that little venous arch near the nail fold, that's your bailout. That's your go-to target when you're struggling. Knowing this anatomy will save your replant. So what if you just can't get a good venous repair? Don't panic, you're not out of moves yet. These are your three main salvage options to deal with that venous congestion. And hey, for all the residents out there, here's a classic boards question for you. If you put on leeches, what do you have to do? You've got to start prophylactic antibiotics, usually a fluoroquinolone, to cover for Aeromonas hydrophila. That little bug lives in the leech's gut. Let's talk about the infamous zone two, no man's land. For a really long time, standard practice for a single digit amputation here was just to revise it and close it up. The fear was always that you'd end up with a stiff, painful finger that just gets in the way. But you know, with newer techniques like wide awake surgery and much better therapy, we can actually get some great functional results now, as long as we pick the right patient. Okay, let's move on to some of the really tough cases you're gonna see. We're talking injuries right through a joint, those nasty avulsion injuries, and of course, our pediatric patients. Each of these brings its own unique set of challenges and rewards. This is just a core principle of hand surgery. Look, fusing a joint is always an option. It's a reliable fallback, but preserving motion, especially at the PIP and MCP joints, is absolutely everything for hand function. You need to exhaust every possible option to save that joint before you even think about fusing it. You know, avulsion injuries are deceptive. They're liars. The skin might not look that bad, but underneath the vessels have been stretched and shredded over a long distance. That's the zone of contusion. So if you just do a simple end-to-end -end repair, it's pretty much guaranteed to clot off. You have to plan on using long vein grafts to bypass that whole damaged segment. Replanting on kids is just one of the most rewarding things we do. Yeah, the vessels are tiny, they love to spasm, but their ability to heal and regenerate nerves is just incredible. The functional outcomes blow adults out of the water, which is why any amputation in a child is considered an absolute indication. Just remember, protect those growth plates and keep the kid calm and warm after surgery to prevent vasospasm. All right, let's switch gears and talk about rebuilding the hand after a multi-digit amputation. This is where you have to think like a chest master. It's not just about saving fingers. It's about a clear strategy to restore the two most important things, pinch and grasp. So the nightmare case rolls in. You've got four or five amputated digits sitting in a bag. You probably can't save them all. 
and you might not even replant them back to where they came from. So how do you prioritize? What's the playbook for turning that disaster back into a functional hand? Here it is. This is your functional hierarchy. Number one, no debate is the thumb. It's like 40% of your hand function right there. After that, you need a stable post to pinch against, which makes the middle and ring fingers your next priority for building a strong grasp. The index and pinky fingers, they're less critical. The goal is to build a hand with a good thumb and at least two other solid digits for a functional tripod pinch. Now this, this is a pro move that can turn a total loss into a huge win. If the amputated thumb itself is just too mangled to use, you don't give up on having a thumb. You take the best looking amputated finger, let's say the index finger, and you replant it onto the thumb spot. You're not just replanting a digit, you're surgically creating a brand new thumb to restore opposition. It's a game changer. Okay, for our last section, let's zoom out from the micro to the macro. We're gonna talk about the really high stakes major limb replants, anything from the rest up, and then we'll cover the post-op principles that apply to every single case you do. For any replant that involves a lot of muscle, like a forearm or an upper arm, this is the number you have to respect. Six hours. More than six hours of warm ischemia time, and the risk of reperfusion injury goes through the roof. That's when all the toxic stuff from that dying muscle floods the system, and you can get kidney failure, cardiac arrest, it can kill the patient. And that just proves that major limb replantation is as much about managing the patient's whole body as it is about microsurgery. You've got to be aggressive. Shorten that bone generously so you can get a tension-free repair. Debride all that dead muscle like your life depends on it. Because the patient's does. And most importantly, you have to get ahead of reperfusion. Talk to anesthesia and give bicarb before you take those clamps off to buffer that acid wave that's about to hit. And after all that, the work isn't over. This table is your early warning system. This is what you, your residents, and your nurses need to be looking at every hour. A Doppler is nice, sure, but nothing beats a good clinical exam. If it's pale and cold, your artery is out. If it's swollen, purple, and has a super fast capillary refill, your vein is blocked. You have to teach your whole team to spot these patterns instantly because time is tissue. So as we wrap this up, I wanna leave you with this one thought. It's so easy to get lost in the technical details, right? The size of the suture, the type of plate. But at the end of the day, our goal isn't just a pink finger when we're done. It's about a lifetime of function for that person. Every single decision we make, how much bone to take, which nerve to fix first, is a deliberate step toward restoring their ability to pinch, to grip, to feel. It's about giving them their hand back, and in a lot of ways, their life back.